He was talking about getting a nickname when he was younger in school. My best friend was, I, I, when I went into primary school, the guy I met was a friend called Brendan. Brendan was food to death. And Brendan's mother was like, I'm not sending him to a special school. He's going to an ordinary primary school where his brothers go. Not because she was standing up for death rakes, just because she didn't want to get him ready a half an hour before everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> right? And she told me yesterday. But Brendan, when we were in school, he won. Heard the teacher say my name and nobody else would speak to Brent because obviously he didn't answer you back, you know, and you had to talk to him, he was learning how to read your lips. So he asked me on the first day, he says, What did you name? And I says, My name is Patrick. So thanks to Brent, my whole time through primary school, I was called Rape Dick. <laughs> you should laugh like fuck, but when you start going to secondary school, people go, You call your mom Rape Dick. <laughs> left me alone for about the first three years. So. But then the sort of felt like I had to make up for it. So whenever I was getting married, I wanted to lose the stigma of having the name Griptic. So we decided we were going to go to Spain till the tattoo convention for my stag dude. Well, I say it was because of that, or it wasn't really my mate. He's a wee bit dodgy and he says, no, my best man. He says, fuck it. We're all going to go to Spain. And I says, fuck, who's going to pay fat? He says, the rab, we're going to do a fair ground. Just tell everybody to bring two cases. So, I stag dude was a fair ground. I stag dude had a hundred people on it. Most of them I didn't know. So what happened was, we got to the tattoo convention the next day, and everybody was like, what are you going to get done? What are you going to get done? And I said, well, I've got to get rid of this stigma of being called grip dick. They all start laughing, going, grip dick! And they says, well, what are you going to do? And I says, I'm going to get a tattoo on my cap in front of everybody. 3,000 people in here. See who's group dick now. <laughs> so we banged a full bottle of vodka, right? And we went to the tattoo convention. And the only guy that would do the tattoo was a Mark, New Zealander. And he couldn't understand me because he didn't speak Davis. <laughs> so we had an interpreter from Manchester. Because <laughs> he fucking understood her, like. <laughs> so we're sitting there anyway, I'm lying on the fucking couch and we're saying what? Right, I want to get this done, I want to get that done. And he was like, you need to make up your mind. And I says, well, what I think I should get done is I think it would be a really good idea. And I was drunk at this stage, right? I says, if I was to get hello put down the back of my cap. So on the honeymoon night, or the night of the wedding, when I'm lying on the bed and my wife comes in, and I'm lying there, and the boy was there, it says, getting fucking gay on that thing like. <laughs> uh, They were joking to say we were going to have to go and get the Chinese people that used to read your name in a grain of rice and say Casa Court. But I ended up, I got it done and I got a, I got a, I got a, a, a samurai sword on it, right? That's what I got on it, right? But obviously because I'm Irish, we're not as endowed as some Africans. When people see it, some people's called it an eagle, some people's called it a dagger. So now, instead of group dick, I'm called dagger dick. <laughs> Which is a good enough name, Nick, you know, but when you have it as your fucking email thing and stuff like that. <laughs> so even people say, why are you called dagger dick? And I was like, I used to drive a taxi, but it wasn't really PSD, and used to bring birds up a mountain. <laughs> Or all the power melters get me or anybody gets me like and the fucking team of men, so he has to identify me like it's always there for somebody to see, like and it's not really and the way I look at it is like I stab a shade out of my way full of time now. <laughs> <laughs> and though she's the best swords follower I know. <laughs> anybody here tonight would like to do any swords following classes? You're more than welcome. <laughs> Only girls and homosexuals don't die. <laughs> Good fellas don't do it, right? I was, um, <laughs> I was told that anyway, I'm not too sure. But uh, 
when I was in America there, I walked around Disney, I'd done 60 mil a week with fucking kids, right? So I fucking lost a bit of weight. And I'm back on the tools, I'm back working as a joiner. And my wife was like, you know what's going to happen? You started lost a bit of weight. You're fucking true. So I'm going well, to fucking fit here when you get back. And I went, well, I'm fucking skinned because it's cost me 10 grand to go here. And I'm fucking not going to be able to buy a new purse. She went, why don't you get yourself a pair of embraces and all the fucking guys are wearing out here, all the car And I says, fuck, that's a great idea. So we went in the shop to get them. You got them at Kmart. And the only ones they had was the hunting ones. Like Duck Dynasty. <laughs> right? So we we'll put them on, right? Like, Hold them, feed them, smell them. No, smell them, they get my coat off, right? They're lovely. Like, they're, 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 they're not like comfortable ones, right? That's what's happening, right? right? That's your main feeling, that verse smell and tell you you want to smell my braces and stuff. Right? So, we got these anyway. I'm going, come on up here, put these on, will you? Serious? Come on. I'm not charged, you look. Come on. I'll let you see my dagger whenever I'm finished. Are you sharing a white Foxy glove, I can tell by the way. You put a cop on my ear. Home anyway, right? Duck Dennis, he put these on, and I went to her. I can't walk about Belfast, fucking this one. Says, put a jumper all over the tablet, nobody'll see it. So, my first job when I came home was to go and work in the Carol's Irish shops down the fucking town. Yeah, do you work her? And why the fuck are you cheering for? Right? So we was going to the Carl's things and he couldn't park outside so I fucking had to fucking get dropped off. I got dropped off with all the toolboxes and I goes in to work at Carl's and it's up the stairs and if they put all these strips into the doors with their router for fire protection because somebody came out and said, save us the fire and here you're all fucked, right? Because them doors don't have a wee strip down and just want to shut closed, right? And then I seen a couple of police birds working and I went, I hope there's a fucking fire out here and them strips do expand to that guy on fucking doors because I'm not far as the evidence up the stairs here, you know? So I'm up the stairs anyway, and what happens is I have gout now, right? Everything's fucked. I have glasses, right? Glasses and gout. <laughs> glasses and gout. I know, I'm falling the fucking apart. I'm 30 fucking five. Look at me, right? 30 fucking five. Gout and everything, right? So I'm fucking living about Belfast and fucking things on, right? I go up the stairs and fucking Carl's. And what happened was I came back from Disney, I'd run out of my tablet, so I went to the doctor and said, my foot's fucked, I have to get back to work, I'm fucking scared. He says, these are real strong tablets. Whatever you do, don't go too far away from your dog, Ali, right? Whatever you do, these tablets, you know, right? He says, like, only take two a day, two a day. You're meant to take three a day, but that's only if you're sitting in the toilet all day, right? I'm not going for this thing about doctors, I bang sexy and fuck <laughs> I'm like, let's get this to work before like, fucking lunch time so I can get a McDonald's at me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm in Carl's and I'm writing fucking doors away, right? And the next minute I went, oh my fucking god, right? Everything, oh fucking shit, right? I drop the fucking tools and I run for the staff toilet, right? And it's a single toilet next to the canteen. And I get in there and there's two wee girls having their lunch and I'm sure they're going, he's fucking Right. I wasn't twanking. I was trying to get my fucking braces off. They were underneath my jumper, right? And I worked users and I went, fuck this, I can't. And I just pulled the bottom and tried to pull it down. But when I done that and bent down, I squeezed my stomach and I fucking just went. <laughs> And I went, holy fuck. I turned round and my phone fell out and went into the bog. Right? And I went, shit, pulled the phone out, looked at the wall, and I swore to fuck, see the wall, there was a V, it looked like a Banksy fucking thing. There was a V, right? But it went everywhere, right? So I had to put my hands down there to get them off to get the bottom sword. So I flicked that off. Now you smell them, did you smell the shit of them still? Did I <laughs> Personal tablets, I'm in the bags, right? I've right? no phone, there's shit all over the place, and I mean, all over the place. And I just sat in there, and if you ever ever feel alone, it's whenever you just shit all over the place. <laughs> In the Carol's Irish shop, in 
in the middle of fucking Belfast, with two wee girls singing that you're wagging in the ball. You can't phone anybody because your phone sucked. Just dropped it in the ball. The shit was all down. The jumper was ripped, the t-shirt was ripped. I had to use the t-shirt and that just to wipe my hands. There's no sink in that toilet. The sink's next door and the fucking canteen. And after three hours of sitting in there, people started worrying. People started worrying. And all I have to say is, where did that wee police girl in there? Yeah. She came up and wrapped the door. And she says, are you okay in there? I says, love him that. I'm not going to have to say it. If you go and get a wee pen and paper, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the number for my man. <laughs> and you're going to ring my man. She's going to be like, I know it's worse. I'm sitting in that wee bog knowing that the room below me, there's fucking Belfast jumpers, Belfast t-shirts, everything. And all I could hear was fucking maybe oh it's great to be army and so I don't know what I'm all fuck. So it was alright. The reason why I rang my ma is because she's on the DLA and I knew she could park outside, right? <laughs> so about an hour and a half later, my ma raves down. And wraps the door and goes, I think so. Are you alright in there? And I go, what are you eating? Shop was meant to close about an hour ago. Everybody knows what's happened now. She says, I have stuff for you here. And I open the door. And my ma, I'm not fucking, I swear to fuck, I'm not kidding you. The only thing that she found for me in her house that belonged to me. It was a 1996 Adidas shell fucking tracksuit. <laughs> and my dad's great high tack buddies that he uses for fucking grass. He used to beat for tennis, but now they're all green, you know what they hear? And the thing about it was, in 1986, I wasn't the size I am now. It wasn't a, it wasn't a 38 waist, I was a 30 waist. Them things only came up to about 30. <laughs> And the hour was ripped. And I had to run out of that shop. But I'm just glad that nobody knows about that. And that's it, man. So every time it comes, we'll